Hello and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Sean with JDS Industries and in this tutorial we're going to improve a photograph using merge modes. Now most of the time when you're uh, taking a look at a photo uh, there are some traditional settings that we can do to improve a photograph and we might use a few of those but we're going to primarily use merge modes as our way of improving a photograph. Now this is a photo I took uh, in 2006, June of 2006 near Livingston, Montana. And it uh, shows this old Ford truck here. It was, a, it was a decent photograph, but it certainly is lacking uh, when it comes to um, the detail, and it's also a little flat. Uh, so we want to correct a few things in here and make this image pop a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is go to uh, do a Control F7, and that's going to open up our Object Manager. Here's our background layer. Uh, I'm not going to modify the background layer. I'm going to keep that uh, as it is. And but I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, make a couple layers here or objects. And you can do that by doing a Control D. Control D is the shortcut. You can make uh, multiple layers here. I'm going to start well with about six or seven layers. And by default, they're going to put them in normal mode at 100%. And so that means it's a thing, it's an exact copy and it's a flat layer. So each one of these that I click on, even if I even if I take the views off of here, you can see nothing is changing. And that's because they're all the same. Uh, and they're all in normal mode at 100%. All right. In this first layer, I'm going to adjust the, the details. I'm going to try to bring out some of these details. I'm going to go into uh, adjust and desaturate. Uh, it's going to render it to a grayscale. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is do an effect called a high pass. So if I go into effects and sharpen and click on high pass, you can see it's going to basically just see the outlines of, of the edges of the truck and the trees. And I've maxed out, I'm going to max this out to 100% percentage and uh, the maximum of a radius of 20. And click OK. Now, merge, mode, merge modes are great because what they do is they, they take a calculation of what the numeric value is of a pixel on the layer below and whatever the uh, numeric value is of a pixel on top, it does something in particular depending on what the merge mode is. So if I change my merge mode in this to, uh, I'm going to do this to soft light. Now in soft light uh, with that grayscale image, you can see the change made. It ignores most of the, that gray, but it did keep the edges, so the highlights and some of the darker areas. Anything darker or lighter than 50% gray, it's going to keep and blend in with the background. So it's just highlighting now the edges. It's going to sharpen my images by, by keeping those edges. So if I click the view on, you can see the details. If I click it off, you can see the original photo. Again, click it on, you can see the change. And that's in soft light at 100%. Okay, and if you if you like that, um, the effect it did, you can actually duplicate that effect just by duplicating this layer. Uh, I might do that later. Right now I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to call this high pass soft light. Click OK. The next layer I'm going to do uh, something different. I'm going to try to even out some of the, the, there's a lot of dark shadows here and even some areas where it's a little blown out in the windshield and possibly in the sky here. So we're going to do a technique similar to what we just did. I'm going to go up to uh, adjust and desaturate again. I'll turn this little eyeball and you can see that in real time happening. So we're going to go to grayscale, but now we're going to invert those colors. Go to transform, uh, no, it's image, transform, invert colors. So now you're going to see a negative of that gray. And then we're going to blur it just a little bit. So we're going to go into Effects, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're going to go we'll move the slider about halfway up here. Click OK. Then we're going to merge that with the layer below. So we're going to put it in a soft light again. Now you can see that that made things kind of flat, but it did correct dark shadows and it did add some darkness into the areas where it was light, but we're going to reduce its effect by lowering the opacity of that layer. 
Okay, you can just see that change. Okay, so I'm going to click on the eye to see what that did. So now it brings out some of those areas that were too dark or blown out. Okay, the next layer, I'm going to just do an overlay. Overlay is a, a nice merge mode, especially if you have two different uh, images, but when you have the same image, it, it what it does, it creates uh, sort of a, a contrasting effect. Uh, so now you can see that uh, the trucks become more vibrant and you can see a lot more detail. We've lost some of the areas under the tire and the wheel well again, but we're going to correct those in a little bit. I'm going to rename some of these layers. This is our desaturated, inverted, blur, soft light, light. OK. That way I can always, uh, if I want to go back and adjust things, I can, and I can know which, uh, I can know what's going on in those layers uh, and adjust accordingly. So let's go to this one. We're going to name this one Overlay. We didn't do any effects. We just changed the merge mode. And that's at 100% opacity. I'm going to, to reduce the effect of that layer. Bring it down to 50. Now in this layer, I'm going to do a screen. And the overall result of a screen is that it it does increase the contrast a little bit, but it actually brightens things. So it, it takes a different set of pixels and brightens them. So here's my screen. Click on, see what that does. Okay, now things are a little overexposed, but that's okay. We're gonna make some adjustments in this layer as well. So I'm going to screen, call that screen, click OK, reduce its effect until I get it to where I want it. OK. The other thing that uh, in this photograph, when I took this photograph, it was an overcast day, so it made the overall image sort of have a blue tint to it. So I'm going to correct that. Let's turn that layer on. When I turn that layer on, you can see this is back to the original photograph because this is in normal mode at 100%. So it's like it's just an exact duplicate of the background. So it's going to show me what I'm doing in real time. So when I'm select, clicked on it, I'm going to go back to adjust, desaturate. It so renders it in grayscale. This time I'm going to bring in my own color. I'm going to add color to this. So go to adjust, color balance. And I've done this before, so it remembered my settings. But basically what I'm doing is adding some red and adding some yellow. And it's giving me sort of a sepia tone. And I'm just doing that to the mid-tone areas. I don't really need to adjust the shadows that much. I don't need to adjust the highlights. Highlights would uh, affect too much of the sky and too much of the white areas of the truck. So I'm just going to use the mid-tones. And I'm going to click OK. Uh, now it's in the CB tone effect, but once I change the merge mode, it's going to merge with the layer below. And you can see that now my I have some the whole image is kind of warmed up a little bit. Watch when I remove the view of this layer. Okay, and now it's back on. You can see how much difference that is. I might not want to have uh, that much influence, but I'm just going to re so I'll reduce that a little bit. It might be a little too warm. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit about halfway, or 60%. Okay. Uh, the next layer, um, I'm going to ignore that for a minute. I'm going to go and add my own layer. So I can see that this wheel well is still getting dark. So be, because of all the different uh, merges we've done here, the effect is to have uh, the, the really dark areas get a little bit too dark again. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to add my own layer. This is a transparent layer. Bring this down here. You can just drag these layers where you want to. I'm going to drag it right here, and I'm going to take my paintbrush. And I've got about 400 is my nib size here. That's about right. Make sure that my foreground color is black. If you want to double check that, you can double click on it and see that, yep, it is black. It's RGB 000. We'll click OK. And I'm going to use this custom airbrush here. 
that's going to give me a kind of a spray can effect. And my nib size, I'm going to keep that the same. I like this transparency to be quite a ways up there. So this is 90% transparency, and that's going to give me the ability to make very small increments uh, so it doesn't get too crazy on every click. It's going to be a very subtle change as I click. This controls the edge of my brush. It, this is 100%. It's maxed out 100%. So this gives me a very soft, soft edge, and that's going to look more realistic than if I had a very hard edge. All right, so with the soft edge, uh, I might want to darken some of the areas here, but I'm going to lighten some areas here. So let's switch this around. Just click this little toggle switch here. You can switch it from black to white. Now my four color is white, so that's going to lighten. Uh, now if I'm in normal mode, you're going to see that this is it's not going to work. Uh, but I need to switch this to soft light so it blends in with the background. So I'm going to just start tapping right here. It's just lightening that area up just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with this wheel well. Now if I think I've done too much, I can, I can either erase or go back in with uh, a black brush. I'm going to use my erase tool and just kind of go right around here because I don't want this whole thing to be lightened. I just want the wheel well. I'm going to go back over this grassy area here. So just the tire and the wheel well, that's all I want. Now I want to toggle this back so I have a dark brush. I'm going to increase, um, use my paint tool again with my brush, my airbrush. I've got the black selected. I'm going to darken this area. I'm going to increase my brush to about 600. Click OK. I'm still at 90% transparency. I still have a big feathered edge. And I'm just going to go right across the top of this window of this uh, hood here and the windshield. You can see how that darkened that up just a little bit. I'm going to go over that one more time. I might go into these trees a little bit here too. Hit these trees, darken them a little. Even my grass right here, here, and through here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now if you want to see what that, uh, what that did all by itself, I'm going to hide all these layers here. So you can see it didn't do a whole lot, but that's what I've painted with, with black. You can't see the white because it's uh, pretty difficult to see on this layer, but there is some white in here that we added for the tire and the wheel well. So let's bring these layers back in so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so with those layers back on, uh, I think we're pretty close to being done here. I might go back and tweak some of these just a little bit. Now that I've got all these layers in here, I'm going to, I think I'm going to delete this layer. I don't think we're going to, oops, right click on it, delete. I don't need that layer. I'm going to keep this one though. This is my, another duplicate layer. This is in normal mode at 100%, but it's turned off. But it's nice to keep this one at the top because all I have to do is click it on just to see what the original photo looked like. Um, so I can see what the, all the changes um, collectively look like in one click. Right? There's the original, there's all my changes. Now if I like what I see, I can I can stop here and I can uh, save it, but I think I'm going to add, I'm going to go back to my, I forgot to label this one, this is my sepia layer, soft light, click OK, I'm going to call this one um, paint layer, small adjustments, soft light, that's my mode, soft light. Click OK. I'm going to add a little bit more, I'm going to warm that up just a little bit. The other thing I think is that uh, I want to bring out some of the vibrancy of this truck. So. I want to bring some of the, the paint to the foreground a little bit and the trees and the grass. So I'm going to add one more layer in here. So from the from the background layer, I'm going to duplicate this again. Control D. And it's going to be right here. Now it's in normal mode. I'm going to keep it in normal mode at 100%. And I'm going to go into adjust and vibrance. Uh, you can see these sliders are maxed out. I'm going to, while that's before I do that, let's go back. I'm going to take and remove all the views 
So you can see what that does when I do it in real time here. Adjust, vibrance. Okay, now it looks a little cartoonish. If you if you increase these sliders too far, it looks a little unrealistic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it there anyway. I'm going to click OK because I can reduce its effect with the opacity slider. So I can bring that down like that. I'm going to keep it at 100% for the moment because now when I turn all these merge modes back on, we'll see what that effect has on the final product. I'm not going to talk, we'll do the top one, keep that one off, that's our original. This is all the merge modes now, including the one that we just did, which I'm going to call Vibrance. Click OK. Now without the Vibrance, you can see what that looks like. Okay. So if I like it, I'm going to keep it. I think I will. Um, if I didn't want it quite to be quite as vibrant, I could take that layer and bring the opacity down just a little bit. All right. I think that's all the adjustments we're going to do, and that's this is not this is the way that uh, the best way to do uh, adjustments in photographs because it's so natural. Um, all these layers blending together. Uh, make it look, make the adjustments look more realistic. And uh, it's fun to play with these different layers. I've only used a few of these different merge modes, uh, the screen, the overlay, um, and the soft light. But there are many others, so if you want to do some experimenting, you can. Uh, once you're finished with your, to, with this uh, image, now if you want to save the layers, you can go in and do a save as, but you'll want to, I'm just going to put this in my downloads for a moment, you'll want to change this to CPT file, Corel Photo Paint. And that's going, to, that's going to save all your layers. So you can go back in there and change it if you want. Click Save. Now this, this is a pretty big file. So if you're going to use this in production, uh, what you want to do is flatten this image. Um, to do that, now that we've saved it as a CPT file or Corel Photo Paint file, I'm going to go in it and merge all these layers and flatten it into one image. You'll want to make sure that this top image, the original duplicate, is turned off. You don't want that to be, you don't want that layer active. So you remove that by just clicking the I. So when I merge these, it will ignore this layer and will merge all the ones they have that are turned on and it'll merge them all together. So to do that, you want to go to Object, Combine, and Combine All Objects with Background, and then Save It. So we're going to do a Save As, and I'm going to save this as a PNG file. I prefer those over JPEGs because it uh, it keeps, it has a transparent background. So if I ever want to use this uh, for another project that might require me <clears throat> removing the background, it's already there. Uh, so it's now in a PNG, PNG format. I'm going to click Save. I'm going to keep all these defaults here. Here's your, um, by default, it's going to have a transparent background. I'm going to keep that. Click OK. And you're good to go. Thanks for watching. My name is Sean Rohde with JDS Industries. If you would like to um, ask us any questions about this, you can contact us directly at 855-782-4657. You can also contact JDS Industries at 800-843-8853. Uh, check us out on our website, jdsindustries.com, and find us on YouTube or Facebook. Thanks, and have a great day.